Hello, welcome to AP Physics 1 Rolling Motion. Before, we've learned what happens when a block slides down a ramp or a ball slides down a curve or anything like that. The key word there is slide. Slide is when something moves along a surface without rotating. However, for round objects, rolling is also something that happens within the real world. This can only be possible because of the friction of the ground that exerts a torque onto a round object, causing it to roll. When the ground has no friction, the round object will not roll and just purely slide. But when we introduce friction, suddenly the object begins to roll and slide before eventually purely rolling. This rolling and sliding state happens due to the linear velocity outpacing the angular velocity. But eventually friction slows the linear velocity down to match the angular velocity. This is when it just purely rolls. When the object is purely rolling, or as we call it, rolling without slipping, there is a very special equation that you can apply. More specifically, this is when v equals omega r, where r is the radius of the rolling object, v is the velocity of the object, the linear velocity, and omega is the rotational velocity. This also applies to acceleration, where an object rolls without slipping. This equation is very similar and is a equals alpha times r, a being the linear acceleration and alpha being the rotational acceleration. Now let's explore a problem which involves this concept. Let's say that a cylinder with mass m and radius r rolls down a ramp without slipping. The angle of the ramp is theta and the coefficient of the friction is mu. The question is, what is the linear acceleration of the cylinder? You can try to pause the video and try for yourself. Now to solve this question, we should see which forces are at play here. There is mg sine theta which is the gravity force pushing the ball down, there's friction force, which is causing the ball to roll, and those are the two forces. Now since the ball is rolling down the ramp, let's say that going down the ramp is positive, so it gives us mg sine theta minus friction force equals ma. Now those are the forces, so now let's look at the torques. The only torque in this equation is friction force. Gravity comes from the center and therefore has no torque onto the cylinder. Since the friction force is applied at the radius and perpendicularly, we can multiply friction force by the radius, which equals iota alpha. Now iota is going to be a known value, which is the moment of inertia for a cylinder, or 1 half mr squared. This is multiplied by alpha, giving us an equation of force of friction times r equals 1 half mr squared times alpha. Now we can use the relation of rolling objects given before, a equals alpha r, and rearranging that equation gives us alpha equals a over r. Now we can replace that value within our torque equation to give us 1 half mr squared times a over r. The r's cancel and we are left with 1 half mar equaling friction force times r. Now again there's another r so we can cancel that r too. That gives us friction force equals 1 half ma. Now let's go back to the force equation. We know that mg sine theta minus friction force is ma. And now we know that friction force equals 1 half ma, so we can replace that, giving us mg sine theta minus 1 half ma equals ma. Then we add 1 half ma to both sides, which gives us mg sine theta equals 3 halves ma. We then cancel the m's and multiply 2 thirds on each side to give us a final answer of 2 thirds g sine theta equals a. That is a linear acceleration and is actually a very clean answer. This exact process is very common within the rotation unit, so definitely try to practice a lot of these kinds of questions because the general theory is going to be the same. Now let's go into the second thing about rolling objects. When it rolls without slipping, there is both linear and angular velocity happening at the same time. This means that a rolling object will have both rotational and linear kinetic energy in one. More specifically, the energy will equal 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared. These energy equations you've gotten from unit 3 and also earlier in the torque unit. This is actually the basis of solving velocities for rolling objects, so again, let's see another question that involves this kind of topic. Let's assume that a sphere rolls down a ramp with mass m and radius r. The ramp has a height of h, and assuming that the sphere begins at the top of the ramp and starts off with no velocity, how fast is the sphere going at the bottom? Pause this video and try to solve it for yourself. Now for this problem, we're going to set up the exact same way we would set up a classic energy ramp problem. 
except this time we're including that rotational term. Our equation will be mgh equals 1 half mv squared, because at the very top it's fully potential energy, while at the bottom it's fully kinetic energy. Now the kinetic energy is going to have one more term, which is 1 half mv squared plus 1 half iota omega squared. Now what we're trying to find is v, but you'll notice that omega is still something we don't know. However, remembering from the relations about the rolling motion from before, we know that v equals omega r, or rearrange it to become omega equals v over r. This means we can again substitute omega with the v over r value, similar to the acceleration we did before, giving us 1 half iota v over r squared. Now iota in this instance is again a known unit, that being 2 over 5 mr squared because it was a sphere. We substitute that in, giving us 1 half times 2 fifths mr squared times v over r squared. Now I know this looks very very complicated right now, but we can completely cancel r squared and combine the constants, giving us 1 fifth mv squared. So it's a lot simpler than you might think. So doesn't this form of mv squared look very similar to the 1 half mv squared being added to? Yes, it does, making our job way easier by just simply adding the mv squareds together, giving us a final value of 7 over 10 mv squared, and that all equals mgh. Now all we have to do is cancel m and we get a grand total of v equals square root of 10 over 7 gh. Not too bad, right? Both questions completely stem from the fact that v equals omega r or a equals alpha r when it's rolling without slipping, that's the important part. Now for this energy question, you'll notice that this value of square root of 10 over gh is smaller than the square root of 2 gh that you might be used to for a sliding problem. That's because the friction slows it down, taking away from the overall velocity and will always be slower than the sliding problem. Now this also means that the smaller iota is, such as a sphere, the bigger the velocity will be, and this is an important distinction. The higher the moment of inertia, the slower it will be at the end. Now that's all for now, thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helps. Best of luck on your studies and bye bye!